Hey everyone, Sam here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. In this video, I'm going to show you this landscape that I painted that features a stand of trees that's backlit by the evening sun. And I'm going to give you some tips on painting that translucency in the leaves as the sunlight passes through it. So we'll just get straight into the video. So sit back, relax, grab your paintbrushes and let's roll the tape. I'm painting on a 12 inch by 12 inch linen panel. The linen is a medium weave oil primed linen and what I did was I actually made this panel myself. I was able to get some craft panels from my local hardware store and then I mounted the linen to it and glued it with some PVA glue. Now making your own panels is a great way of saving money and I really like painting on panels just because they're sturdy and robust and they're really easy to frame as well. They're also great for painting outdoors if you want to paint on plein air. So here I'm sketching out my composition. I'm using Burnt Sienna mixed with Liquin Original and as I'm using oil paint, what the Liquin does is it thins the paint and speeds up the drying time. So this is a great medium to use if you want to get lots of paintings done because it dries quickly. Now there's quite a lot going on in this painting, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna give you some tips on painting the sunlit trees and creating that translucent foliage as the sun passes through it. I'll go over the colors I'm using as well. So I'm using a brand called Blue Ridge Oils, and these are a beautiful artist quality oil paint that are available online and I've put the link to their website in the description box below. The colors I'm using include Titanium White, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Cadmium Yellow, Cadmium Orange, Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue and Thalo Green. Now the advantage of using less colours is that I'm more likely to achieve colour harmony in my paintings because I'm going to be using common colours throughout. Once my composition is sketched out, the first thing I think about is the values and values is how light or dark a subject is. Now if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll hear me talk about this a lot, about painting your dark values and shadows first. And the reason I do this is because it, it helps me to create a tonal dynamic and atmospheric perspective in the painting. I think it's a much easier way of doing it and I learnt this from painting outdoors, so painting your dark values first. So we'll find our darkest darks and our lightest lights in the foreground, but in the distance darks are not quite as dark. Also lights get a bit darker as well. Now as I say, I repeat this concept quite a lot, but I've found personally that repetition is the best way of learning. Now this painting is in close proximity, so there's not really any distant landforms in it, but I still want to create some depth. So I start off with those background trees that are in shadow, but then also they're being affected by the light from the sun that's passing through. Now when I got the idea for this painting, I was actually driving around in my local area looking for spots to paint. And I found this spot, I just like the way the water leads the eye towards the trees. It was early autumn and still quite bright in the evening, but the sun was definitely setting in the sky. And there was light passing behind the trees that are illuminating the trees in the foreground here, but also have an effect on those background trees as well. In order to create a sense of distance, I'm going to make these trees in the background tonally lighter. I used a mix of yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson and titanium white and I'm going to create a light to mid-tone value here. The tree that's on the left in the mid-ground has much darker foliage. So I used my existing mix that I made for the background trees and I introduced more ultramarine blue and yellow ochre. And then I start marking in the branches and main stems of the poplar trees in the foreground and then the tortoise tree on the left in the mid-ground. I try and keep my colour mixes simple and also carry through similar colours throughout the painting to maintain the colour harmony and it just means your painting will read well, i.e. the viewer will look at it and think, wow, that's a really nice painting, and they might not even know why. 
There's a lot of green in this painting, so even my shadow mix are gonna reflect this. And mostly it's just varying combinations of ultramarine blue with yellow ochre. And then I've added other colors such as titanium white to adjust the value. And I round off these colors as well with something that contains red, like an alizarin crimson. For the grass shadows, I make those a bit lighter because grass is actually a much lighter color in the landscape. Trees, however, are much darker in value than grass. And in fact, in a lot of cases, they can be the darkest values to be found in the landscape, especially conifer trees. They naturally have dark colored foliage. I'm keeping my brush marks loose and gestural and I love using number five flat brushes. I find that these are a really good size for a lot of small to mid-sized paintings. The brushes I'm using are Rosemary & Co brushes and these are just beautiful to use and I've been using these brushes for years. If you'd like to get hold of some Rosemary & Co brushes, I've put a link in the description box below. Once I've marked in the shadows and the trees and the grass, the last major zone of shadows is in the poplar tree, which is in the foreground. And again, this is mainly a mix of ultramarine blue with yellow ochre. Now, as I say, I'm mostly just gonna focus on these poplar trees here and how to create that translucent light. If you'd like to have more details and have a go at painting this yourself, I do have a full length version of this video and I'll give you the details of that at the end of this video. So I'm gonna be painting the areas of foliage that are in light, but how can we create that translucent light or the illusion of sunlight passing through the leaves, creating this illuminated foliage? Well, I've found that through painting that the best way to create this is to create a contrast between those dark shadows within the tree's canopy and the areas that are in light, which are gonna be much lighter in value. So I'm gonna mix a nice high chroma green here that's relatively light in value. Chroma or saturation refers to the intensity of the color. So I wanna mix a quite rich green here, but not one that's too out of control or garish. We want to keep those greens balanced. What I've done here is I've started off with some yellow ochre and then I've mixed in some cadmium yellow. That's just going to boost the saturation. I then mix in some ultramarine blue to create my green. Then after that, I round off the green with something that contains red, in this case, alizarin crimson, as this just helps to desaturate it a little because it's a color opposite on the color wheel. And it also keeps it looking more natural and balanced. I can adjust the value and make it lighter by introducing some titanium white. Titanium white will have a desaturating effect on the color, so keep this in mind as well. Now, once I've marked in the trees, I went across the rest of the painting because it was mostly grass, of which there is a lot of it. This is a similar color to the poplar trees, but lighter in value, so there would have been more titanium white in the mix. Now, once I'd marked in most of the major zones, I came back to the poplar tree in the foreground and just fleshed out the tree's canopy a little bit more, but essentially using the same colors that I used just a moment ago. Once I'd added more of those areas that are in light, I went back over and added more shadow areas. So I was already starting to build up the form of the canopy even during the blocking stage. Once I'd blocked in the whole painting, I left it to dry. And it's at this stage that I just have a look at the whole thing, make sure that everything's working, the colors and the values. And basically it just serves as a map or a base to work from that I can start building up some detail in the painting once it's dry. I worked on this painting over a few evening sessions. Overall, when I'm working on a painting, I keep the colors a little bit darker in value so that I've still got plenty of room to add my lighter layers later on in the painting, where I save my lightest values until the very end. So right at the very end of the painting, I'll be adding my lightest lights. So now the painting was dry, I was able to start adding some detail on it and start refining the shapes of the trees. And one of the things I did here was I used the sky mix to paint some sky holes and fill in the negative spaces around these trees. After adding a few more details, I got straight back into painting the tree canopies and adding some lighter layers of leaves where the sunlight is passing through them. Now, just like before, I'm using the same colors for these areas of leaves that are in full sunlight as I did during the blocking in stage, which was a mix of yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue, 
some alizarin crimson and titanium white. And I'm also able to boost the saturation by mixing in a small amount of phthalo green. And this just shifts the color where you can create some really nice rich greens. But be careful with this color because it's very strong and if you mix in too much, it will quickly overpower your mixture. So you'll only need a small amount of this color. So here I was adding another layer to the foliage, some lighter layers. And I'm marking in the paint with a number three filbert brush. And these brushes are really great to use because you can use the broad end of the brush for thicker brush marks or use the rounded edge for finer marks. So these are really good for painting leaves. After this, I spent some time building up the detail within the painting. But then when I came back to the tree, I started to build up some half tones within the tree shadows. So a few lighter areas. Now I've used similar colors that I used for the areas in light, but made the value much darker. So mostly ultramarine blue with yellow ochre, a bit of cadmium yellow and alizarin crimson. I've made my brush mark smaller here to communicate clumps of leaves. Now at this point, I let the painting dry so that I could next add the areas of the tree's foliage that are in the full sunlight. I spent a few evenings on this painting and was building up the form of the trees. So lastly was to paint the translucent leaves that are in full sunlight. Now I'm using smaller brushes to communicate clumps of leaves and just add a bit more detail. I'm mixing in some lighter value colors here and it's still essentially the same mix that I used before. So yellow ochre with cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue. I've used a little bit of cadmium orange also titanium white to lighten the value and then I can shift that green and just increase the saturation a bit with some phthalo green. Now you'll see that this layer of green is lighter than the previous layer and this just helps to build up the three-dimensional form of the trees. Now when it came to finishing up the painting, this is where I save my lightest values until the very end. So working on the poplar tree foliage, I'm just going to add a few highlights here that's just going to add to the three dimensional form of the tree. I'm going for a light value but quite saturated green using a mix of yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, phthalo green and some titanium white. And I'm applying the paint here with a number zero round brush. So a much smaller brush here just for a few finer marks. Now, as I say, I always save my lightest values until the very end of the painting. And this was in the water where I painted some sparkles using a mix of titanium white with a little bit of burnt sienna. Now, as I'm painting this, you'll notice that I'm using a mole fork here on the right side of my painting, and this is to help steady my hand and my arm. My hand can be a bit shaky sometimes when I'm painting. These are a really useful tool to use in your studio, and you can get them from molefork.com. Now, another way you can improve your tree painting skills is to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up as I often make lots of videos on painting trees and landscapes in general. If you want to get more in depth with learning to paint some of the landscapes that I present in my videos, then check out my website at samuelerp.com where I've got some free written painting tutorials, but also some in-depth full length painting tutorials which you can purchase from my website. These videos are also available and more by subscribing to my Patreon channel for just $5 a month or $51 annually where you save 15% and each month you get a full length painting tutorial video with notes and reference photos plus access to all the other videos and there's probably about two years worth of videos on there now so this whole thing is like a landscape painting course so perfect if you want to improve your painting skills or even if you're brand new to painting and you want to have a go at painting landscapes it's all there on my Patreon channel and my website. And I've put the links in the description box below. One last thing, if you subscribe to my email list, I'm giving away a free ebook on introduction to oil painting. And in my emails, I send you alerts when I've got new videos out, new content, paintings I'm working from, products and merch that I have for sale, all that good stuff. So as I say, all the links are in the description box below. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful and I hope that it inspires you to have a go at painting trees and landscapes. 
Thanks for watching, have a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next video.